So, we have derived a very important result related to the polar representation of complex number which states that cos theta plus iota sin theta to the power n is equals to cos in theta plus iota of sin in theta. So, we have derived a very important result related to the polar representation of complex number which says that cos theta plus iota sin theta to the power n is equal to cos in theta plus iota sin in theta. Now, this doesn't seem to be very interesting. Let us try to prove some real world result using this formula. I can, easy, I can put n equals to 2 in this equation. So, what I get here is cos theta plus iota sin theta whole square which as per this equation is equals to cos theta cos 2 theta plus iota sin 2 theta. When I expand this what I get is cos square theta plus iota sin theta square plus 2 cos theta into iota sin theta. This is equals to cos square theta. Iota square is minus 1, so I can write this as minus sin square theta plus 2 iota cos theta sin theta. Now, going back to our initial discussion related to the equality of complex number, we said that two complex number would be equal when the real components would be equal and their imaginary components would be equal. I now, this whole term is equal to cos 2 theta plus iota sin 2 theta. So, comparing the real and the imaginary parts, what we get is cos 2 theta is equal to cos square theta minus sin square theta and sin 2 theta is equals to 2 cos theta sin theta. These two are the two real result related to the geometry uh, to the uh, uh, two real res result related to trigonometry which are the formula of cos 2 theta and sin 2 theta and we have even derived this by solving the equation of two complex number. Again I would even want to emphasize here that these complex numbers are not just imaginary numbers and we have a lot of real world application of this. So, we started with solving an equation related to complex numbers and we landed up proving result real results. These, thus, these complex, uh, complex number, this complex number is a very vast chapter which not just adds richness to mathematics but even has lots of real world applications. Now, this equation that is of de Worm's law even gives me a way to find square root of any complex number. Let us say, can I raise this? I hope you all have noted down. I say I want to find I, I, I to the power 1 by I want to find for example I say I want to find the 6th root of I that is I want to find I to the power 6. This means I want what what, what the, does this means? I want to find a complex number such that when I raise the complex number to the power 6 I get I. So, I say there exists a complex number x plus iota y which when raised to the power 6 would give me I. So, I can say I to the power 1 by 6 would be equals to x plus iota y. Now, what I am doing is I am raising both these all both of these equations to the power 6. So, what I get is here is I equals to 
to the power 6. This is equals to 0 plus 1 into iota. When I expand this equation, what I am going to get is x to the power 6. I am doing binomial expansion and I am writing it directly. 6 x to the power 5 into iota y plus 15 x square into iota to the power 4 plus 20 x cube into iota y cube plus 20 x square into iota y to the power 4 plus 15 x into iota y to the power 5 plus 6 x into iota y plus iota y to the power 6. Now in order to solve this equation what I will do is I will separate the real parts in the imaginary part and then I will equate the real part to 0 and the imaginary part to i. But what I see is I have to do a lot of mathematical calculation here. Now this is the point where we get the real tremendous power of polar coordinates. I say my complex number would be something of the form r comma theta. Now, now using this equation I even get a way to find square root of any real or complex number. Let us see how, can, how we can use this equation to find square root of any number. For example, I want to find the sixth root of i. That is, I want to find any real or complex number. In this case, it is going to be a complex number. So, I want any complex number whose sixth power is equal to i. Let us say, there is just some complex number of the form x plus iota y which when raised to the power 6 gives us iota. So I can say, so what I get is x plus iota y to the power 6 would be equals to i. Now when I expand this equation using binomial expansion, what I will get is something of this form x to the power 6 into 6 x square x to the power 5 iota y plus 15 x to the power 4 iota to the power iota y to square plus 20 x cube iota y whole cube plus 15 x square iota y to the power 4 plus 6 x into iota y to the power 5 plus iota y to the power whole 6 would should be equals to 0 plus iota into 1. Now referring back to a previous discussion related to the equality of two complex number what we define was two complex number would be equal only when the real components are equal and their imaginary components are equal. So in this case we see that all the even power of i is going to give us real terms because i square is minus 1 and i to the power 4 is 1 and all the imag all the odd powers of i are going to give us imaginary terms. So, in order to solve this equation what we will do is we will separate all the real powers of i, all the imaginary parts of i and then we will equate to 0 and 1 respectively. But do not you see this is going to, going to lead to a big mathematical calculation. What if I had to find something like a square, a square root of um, 7th power or for example I wanted to find the 10th root of i or maybe like something like 98 or 99th root of i. This is going to lead to a very huge calculation. So this is where the real power of the polar uh, of the polar coordinates lie. 
if i try to solve this problem using polar coordinates it's going to uh, it's going to be really easy and that is what is the beauty of polar coordinates so uh, our, uh, what we were trying to find out was the sixth power of i when i try to represent i geometrically it would be a point of the form 0 1 that is it is going to represent a complex number whose amplitude is 1 uh, whose uh, modulus is 1 and whose argument is pi by 2 so i can write iota as 1 comma pi by 2 now what i have to do is i have to find a complex number which when raised to power 6 gives me iota let us say there exist a complex number r comma theta which when raised to power 6 gives me iota that is 1 comma pi by 2 now here lies the beauty of this equation in terms of polar coordinates i can easily write r comma theta to the power x equals to r to the power 6 comma 6 theta which is equals to 1 comma pi by 2 remember when we tried multiplying two complex number what we got was in order to multiply n factors of complex number what we'll do is we'll multiply their uh, our, uh, our modulus and we'll add their arguments in this case the modulus is r and the argument is theta for all the factors so what we get is r to the power 6 and and uh, the argument to be 6 theta now r to the power uh, equating these uh, the uh, modulus and the argument what i get is r to the power 6 has to be 1 this implies r could be either plus 1 or minus 1 but in term when we represent a complex number in polar coordinates r can be just positive this gives me only one result that is r has to be one and similarly 6 theta can be equals to pi by 2 should be equals to pi by 2 am i writing something wrong yes 6 theta can not be just equal to pi by 2 it can be equal to 5 pi by 2 9 pi by 2 then 13 pi by 2 that is it can be of the form pi by 2 plus 2n pi so what i observe here is whenever i am increasing this term that is the rhs term by a factor of 2 pi my this term is increasing by the factor of 2 pi by 6 i am repeating once again what i am doing is when i am increasing the right hand term by a factor of 2 pi that is 360 degrees my left hand term that is my especially my theta my theta is increasing by a factor of 60 degrees let us try to get some values of theta from this equation when i put theta pi n equals to 0 i get theta to be pi by 12 when this is when this is going n is going to be 1 i'll get is 5 pi by 12 9 pi by 12 13 pi by 12 17 pi by 12 23 pi by 12 sorry 21 pi by 12 then 25 pi by 12 5 pi by 12 uh 20 sorry 29 pi by 
and so on. But what I see from here is pi by 12 is equal to 25 pi by 12 because this can be easily written as 2, 2 pi plus pi by 12. This would be equals to 25 pi by 12 and so on. So that this, this gives me that the values that are only going to matter is this set of values. Let us try to plot all these values geometrically in our polar coordinates. So, I know that the, argue, the amplitude of all for all these value of theta is going to be 1 because there is only one value of r that is satisfying this equation that is r equals to 1. So, I can plot a circle with radius 1 here. The first value of theta that satisfies this equation is pi by 12 that is 15 degrees. So, I can plot z1 that is 1 comma pi by 12 with theta pi by 12 and I say this is the first solution of this equation that is i to the power 1 by 6. Now, I have to prove, now let us try to prove that this equation is the solution for this equation. So, what I say is this that is z which is 1 comma pi by 12 when raised to the power 6 should give me iota that is 1 comma pi by 2. Now, when I multiply 1 comma pi by 12, when I raise 1 by pi by 12 to the power 6, what I will get is 1 to the power 6 because we have to multiply the argument, uh, we have multiply the uh, modulus and 6 into pi by 12 that is at pi by 12 6 times what I get is 1 comma pi by 2 which is equals to iota. Thus, from here we can clearly see that 1 comma pi by 12 is one root of this equation. Similarly, we can plot all other all other values here. When we plot all the values here, what we will see is all these values z1, z2, z3, z4, z5 and z6, they divide this circle into 6 equal parts. Difference between these two is going to be 60 degrees, again 60 degrees, again 60, again 60. So, what I can see here is all these roots of the equation divide by circle into 6 equal parts and their modulus is always 1. Now, let us try to, uh, let us take one more root of this equation that is 1, 9 pi by 12 comma uh, 9 pi upon 12. I am, I have just selected this one because this seems to be a really easy one. I can write 9 pi by 12 as 3 pi by 4. So, in this case the x coordinate would be minus 1 by root uh, 1 by minus 1 by root 2 and then y coordinate would be 1 upon root 2. Now, if you guys try to uh, now if we raise minus 1 by root 2. comma 1 by root 2 to the power 6 what we should get is iota. I leave this as an exercise for you all to prove that when we raise this equation to the power 6 we get nothing but iota. So, this is how this is how now we see is that using polar coordinates in this equation it is really so easy 
to find square root of any any real number this is what is the beauty of polar coordinates and the uh, and this equation especially the beauty of complex number so going uh, referring back to our very initial discussion uh, related to the evolution of real number and complex number we saw that since integers were not close for the division of two numbers we had to develop a new system of complex number that is real numbers because integers were not close for division that is the division of that is the question of two division uh, that is the question of two integers was not an integer secondly because real numbers were not closed for finding the square roots we had to develop a new set of number that is complex numbers because the uh, the square root of some of the real numbers was not lead was not a, comp, a real number so we had to develop a new set of numbers called complex number but what we see here is the square root of all the complex number is always a complex number so i can say that all the complex number are closed for finding square roots this means there is no more need to invent another uh, another number sets uh, which is should be the extension of complex number because all the complex number are closed for addition subtraction multiplication division and for finding square roots thus we see that as of now we have no need to develop an extension of complex number and we can very safely say that complex numbers are closed for finding square root of any number now let us try to generalize this result related to the uh, related to finding square root of any complex number so i say now let us try to generalize the result related to forming uh, related to obtaining the square root of any complex number so i say we have a complex number of the form x plus iota v which in polar coordinates could be written as r comma theta so whenever i have found to find to find the qth root of i basically what i want to find is cos theta plus iota sin theta to the power 1 by q i can write this as using de morphs theorem i can write this would be equal to cos theta upon q plus iota sin theta upon q but we know that theta is a parametric function of of 2 pi so this equation will have roots in the form of 2n pi plus theta upon q up till now we have seen how we can find the, uh, how we can find root of any complex number using de morphs theorem we have seen how we uh, how we could find i to the power 1 by 6 now let us try to generalize this equation so that we can find any root of any complex number say i have a complex number z of the form x plus iota v which could be even rep represented as r comma theta in polar coordinates now i have to find the qth root of z that is basically what i have to find is z to the power 1 by q i can write this as r into cos theta plus iota sin theta to the power 1 by 6 using de morphs theorem i can write this to be equal to r to the power 1 by 6 cos theta to the power 6 plus iota sin theta to the power 6 now i am trying to generalize this result we know that theta uh, sorry this is q we know that theta is a parametric function of 2 pi so in order to generalize this result 
we can replace theta by 2 and pi plus theta. So, what I can write here is r to the power 1 by 6 into cos of 2 and pi plus theta upon q plus iota sin 2 and pi plus theta upon q. this where the value of n may vary from 0 to n minus 1. After n minus 1 we are again going to get the same result because theta is a periodic function. So, this I can say this is my generalized equation to find square root of any complex number of the form r comma theta. Let us try to see an extension of this equation only. For example, instead of z to the power 1 by q, I want to find something like z to the power p by q. This is very easy. What I can do is, I can write this equation as r cos theta plus iota sin theta to the power p by q. Can I even write it as this whole to the power p into 1 by q. Well, I am I have done nothing, I have just written p by q as p into 1 by q. So, this equation turns out to be r to the power p into cos of p theta. We have already seen that when we multiply a complex number, uh, when we multiply two complex numbers or n factors of a complex number, what we do is we multiply their uh, um, uh, modulus and we add their arguments. So, here we get what is cos p theta plus iota sin p theta. This complete to the power 1 by q. Now, this turns out to be in this form. So, the generalized equation for this would be r to the power p into cos of 2 and pi plus p theta to the power q plus iota sin 2 and pi plus p theta to the power q. where n would again vary from 0 to q minus 1. So, I say this, this and this especially this one is our basic equation to find any nth root of any complex number. Now, let us see some special cases of this equation. If I say my z in this equation is equals to 1, this implies in polar coordinate my complex number could be represented as 1 comma 0. When I put this in this equation what I have theta equals to 0 and r equals to 1. So, the solution of the equation would be cos 2 and pi by q plus iota sin 2 and pi by q. Where q n would vary from 0 to n minus 1. Basically what we are trying we are trying is what we are trying to find the qth power of 1. What I have written is I can represent 1 as 1 comma 0 in polar coordinates that is the principal argument would be 0 and the modulus is 1. Now, applying this equation from here uh, I, using this equation and applying here in this case theta would be 0 and r would be 1. So, the general solution for any qth power of 1 turns out to be this 
now let us put n equals to 3 uh, let us put q equals to 3 in this equation and try to find cube roots of unity when I put n equals to uh, 0 in this equation the first root turns out to be cos of 0 plus iota sin 0 the second root is cos of 2 pi by th pi by th 2 pi by 3 plus iota sin 2 pi by 3 and the third root is cos of 4 pi by 3 plus iota sin 4 pi by 3 putting the value of these what I get is the first root is 1 comma 0 the second is minus 1 by 2 plus root 3 by 2 and the third one is minus 1 by 2 minus root 3 by 2 now let us observe some really interesting properties of these three values if I say minus 1 by if I try to square this term value that is minus 1 by 2 the power root 3 by 2 let us just see what we get we will simply provide a square plus b square plus, plus r term so what I am going to get is 1 by 2 whole square plus iota of root 3 by 2 whole square plus 2 minus 2 into 1 by 2 into iota root 3 by 2 so what I get here is minus 1 by 2 minus of iota root 3 by 2 this is which is nothing but equal to the third root of this equation so if I denote this by some word for example let us invent a new word omega and say this root to be omega then this root is equals to omega square so I can say that the three cube that the cube root the three roots of unity would be one comma omega comma omega square now and let us try to represent these three roots geometrically on our argon plane so what I can see is the first root is 1 comma 0 the second root is minus 1 by 2 plus root 3 comma root 3 by 2 and the third one is minus 1 by 2 minus root 3 by 2 the argument uh, the modulus of all the three roots is 1 so I say if I put out a unit circle then all the three roots are going to lie on this unit circle and when I join these three things what I can see is that these three uh, these three complex number divide this circle into three equal parts now some interesting properties related to omega and omega square when we multiply 1 into omega into omega square we get omega cube which is equals to 1 similarly omega plus omega square is equals to 0 now let us observe some really interesting properties related to 1 omega and omega square the first one is if we multiply all the three roots that is 1 into omega into omega square what we get the result is 1 
we can easily prove this by multiplying 1 into minus 1 plus i to root 3 by 2 and minus 1 by 2 add minus i to root 3 by 2. The second one is 1 plus omega plus omega square is equal to 0. We can do this from here. When we add this, what we get is minus 1, minus 1 plus 1 is 0. One more really interesting property is this. The first root is minus 1 plus root 3 by 2 and the uh, minus 1 plus add root 3 by 2. And the second root is minus 1 minus add root 3 by 2. When we observe these two roots, we see that the, the second root is the conjugate of the first root because both have the same real part that is minus 1 by 2. And the first root has uh, the uh, root 3 by 2 as the coefficient of the imaginary part and the second root has minus 3 by root 3 by 2 as the coefficient of the imaginary part. So I can write the here as omega. Omega, omega square is equals to omega bar which is equals to 1 upon omega and the fourth property is when I plot all the three roots on a unit circle which we have already seen they divide the circle into three equal parts from this here, I can say, write this as, I can, uh, I can multiply omega and omega square cube and I can write omega cube as always equals to 1. If I want to generalize this, I can even write omega to the power 3n is always equals to 1. Now, let us, we have, here we have seen how we can find cube roots of unity. Similarly, let us try one more, let us try to put one more value in the general equation and let us try to find out the four, uh, the four roots of unity that is 1 raised to the power 1 by 4. So what we are try, have trying to find out is the fourth root of unity. Just to refresh our memories, we are writing the general equation that we derived earlier once again which says that z to the power 1 by q or 1 to the power 1 by q in our case because we are finding the roots of unity only would be equal to cos 2n pi by q plus iota sin 2n pi by q. In our case q, since we have to find the fourth root, the q is going to be 4, putting the values, uh, putting the values of n equal to 0, 1, 2 and 3, what I get is the three, the four roots will be cos 0 plus iota sin 0, that is 1. The second root is going to be cos 2 pi, 2 pi by 4 and iota sin 2 pi by 4, that is cos pi by 2 and iota sin pi by 2 which is equals to iota. The third root would be 4 pi by 2 and sin 4 pi by 2 which would be equals to minus 1 and the fourth root would be 8 pi by 4, 8 pi by 4 and iota sin 8 pi by 4 which is going to be equals to minus iota. So I can write here that the 4 roots of 1 to the power 1 by 4 would be 1 iota minus 1 and minus iota. Let us even try to plot these roots geometrically. These root, again the magnitude of all these 4 roots is 1. So I can plot them on a circle of unit radius. So my x axis, this is my y axis, this is the first root 1, this represents iota, this represents minus iota, minus 1 and this represents minus iota. So here once again what I observe is these 4 roots divide this unit circle into 4 equal parts. Now let us try to generalize this equation. 
for any qth power of i what we can write is the q uh, the q uh, the roots for this equation 1 to the power 1 by q would be cos 2 pi by q plus iota sin 2 pi by q actually even before that the roots are going to be the first root would be uh, the values of n would vary from 0 to q minus 1 so when we will put z equals to 0 n equals to 0 the first root would be cos 0 plus iota sin 0 the second root is going to be cos 2 pi by q plus iota sin 2 pi by q till cos 2 n minus 1 pi by q plus iota sin 2 n minus 2 n minus 1 pi by q I hope you are all getting this let me know if there is any doubt I am just repeating this once again I have done nothing this was a general equation we had already derived I have just put the values of n in this equation that is I, I say n we know that n would vary from 0 to q minus 1 so putting these values we have got this now using the Dewar's law I can write this complete thing as cos 0 plus iota sin 0 cos 2 pi by q plus iota sin 2 pi by q I can write cos 2n minus 1 pi by q and iota sin 2n minus pi by q as these two terms are going to be same cos 2 pi by q plus iota sin 2 pi by q from De Moore's law I can write this term as equals to cos 2 pi by q plus iota sin 2 pi by q to the power n minus 1 remember what we used to say in De Moore's law was cos 2 pi by q plus iota sin 2 pi by q to the power n minus 1 is equals to cos 2 n uh, 2 pi by q into n minus 1 and iota sin 2 pi by q n minus 1 we have just written the reverse of it now if I denote cos 2 pi by q plus iota sin 2 pi by q by z so I can write here is if cos 2 pi by q plus iota sin 2 pi by q is equals to z then these roots can be written as z to the power 0 z to the power 1 z square up to z to the power minus 1 what I have done is we have replaced cos 2 pi by q plus iota sin 2 pi by q by 0 so these terms turn out to be z to the power 0 z to the power 1 z to the power z square up to z to the power n minus 1 now let us see some interesting properties related to all these roots of cube roots of all these roots of 1 so we had initially seen that when we were finding the cube roots of unity the three roots were dividing the circle into three equal parts when we were finding the fourth roots of roots of unity we saw that they were even dividing the circle into fourth root four equal part similarly the nth roots of unity divide a circle of unit radius into n equal parts that is the first property related to these roots the second property is if when we try to add all these roots the result is going to be 0 you can easily prove this by adding all these roots and applying the formula of arithmetic progression 
Similarly, uh, sorry, of geometry, sorry, the formula of geometric progression because all these roots are in GP. Similarly, when we we'll try to multiply all these roots, pass z and minus one, we get minus one to the power minus minus one to the power n minus one. So these are the three properties related to any qth root of unity. Let us try to summarize what we started in today's lecture. We started with a polar representation of complex number where we used to say that any complex number could be represented in a 2D plane and we used to call this and we call that plane as argon plane and the representation of complex number on it as, uh, as argon diagram. Then we realize that the argument could be of any value, could have any values that is theta could be represented as 2 and pi plus theta. So the theta could have multiple values. So we defined a concept of the principal argument of theta where we said that any value of theta that will lie between minus pi to plus pi we will call it as the principal argument of the complex number. Then we just, then we just developed the very common way a working rule basically to find the value of the principal argument because we reali what we realized was the value of the principal argument depends upon the coordinate in which it lies. Then we started with the multiplication of two complex number and polar coordinates and we realized that multiplication of two complex number R1 of the form R1 theta 1 and R2 theta 2 can be easily derived by multiplying their, amplitude, their magnitudes and adding their arguments. We even saw from that using this we could even derive how the multiplication of two negative real number is always a positive real number. Then we extended this result to, uh, to, uh, to find a very important law that is the, that is the de Morgan's law. Using the de Morgan's law we even realized how we could find the cube root of any complex number and uh, with that we even realized that uh, complex number are always closed to finding square roots or any root of a complex number. Using the same de Morgan's law we even derived the various powers of unity. Now let us try to understand this concept more better with the help, with the help of some illustrations.